Hi, Mario here. First, I want to thank my patrons for supporting my work. Welcome to Saxaweman, located in Peru. We have seen many suggestions and hypotheses as to how the fascinating stone blocks of Saxaweman were created. I think that in many of these ideas there is some truth. The stones are probably not cut but molded with an unknown technique. Almost instantly counter arguments arise questioning the technique of molding, arguing that nothing but primitive tools have been found so far. If the stones had been molten and then molded, a massive amount of energy and all sorts of installations would have been needed to get the work done. Where is it? The most probable truth appears to be as simple as it is elegant. The city, the construction, the structures and the builders are originally hundreds or thousands of years old. Only stone survives long enough to be the only thing left when found at the site. Everything else, like steel, bronze, platinum, diamond, plastics, glass, is all corroded and has decomposed in that time frame. That is why nothing is found and that is why mainstream archaeology composes the weirdest ideas as to how massive ancient structures must have been made. They believe that beautiful, incredibly hard granite artifacts can be made with bronze or steel tools, forgetting that granite cannot even be scratched with steel. They like to call themselves scientists, but are not worthy to have the title when they suggest irrational ideas. Only diamond is hard enough to cut through granite. So we surmise that the ancients used diamond studded equipment to cut through hard rock. Why aren't these tools found? Because the current dating of ancient structures is incorrect. They are much older than currently assumed and all equipment is simply lost in an ocean of time. That is why. It is also believed that ancient peoples were less intelligent than we are today, while Homo sapiens, with the same brain size, using the same magnificent hands as we today on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years. The qualities and talents of humans do not depend on their education, on their master's degree or which car they drive. It's all in our DNA. In the ancient past, there were brilliant minds as well. We could also suggest all kinds of ideas as to how the ancients might have constructed the marvelous stone walls. However, that is not our specialty. Our specialty is to analyze ancient structures via our method that consists of two layers, orientation and ancient solstices. Both these properties are dimensionless and therefore transcend physical properties. And that is the reason why our method is more convincing than any other materially oriented methods. Most material theories can be overthrown by other material theories and this can go on for centuries, never delivering real results. On the other hand, dimensionless theories reside at the very core of existence and deliver results that stand the test of time. They uncover time frames in which vast civilizations have thrived. This helps us understand why our ancient history is so confusing and so difficult to understand. It is mainly because dimensionless theories reveal 
the immensely long time frames when these civilizations have thrived. We have published a paper called On the Orientation of Latin American Pyramids and Temples. You can find it online on our website. I've put a link down below. We have discovered that 95.1% of all ancient structures in the Western Hemisphere, from the US down to Argentina, are clockwise oriented. Only a handful is counterclockwise or cardinally oriented. The probability that this pattern is the result of a coincidental process is 0%. The same reasoning applies to the core of Saksay Weyman. It is also clockwise oriented. It also contains some sort of a sundial, similar to the one we have seen at Chaco Canyon. No one knows what it was used for because it points to nowhere, so to speak. Yet, we have discovered to which pole Saksay Weyman was originally oriented, how the sundial was used, and thus we discovered the true age of Saksay Weyman. Because the configuration matches the ancient pole positions and the sundial in the center suddenly starts to work, we can accept the probability that we are correct in our conclusions and can claim with a very high probability the true age of the core of Saksay Weyman. The hoary age of Saksay Weyman explains why no tools were ever found and also why unreasonable speculations keep popping up. We could focus endlessly on the complicated zigzag structure made with these baffling, beautifully molded blocks. However, it is obvious that these blocks are crafted with an unknown, sophisticated technique. And because the site is likely to be very ancient, no tools are found, only the stone blocks are left and escaped decomposition. So we would be guessing, like everyone else, which technique actually did get used. More interesting is to know its age and thereby understand why no tools are found. To better grasp the age of Saxe Weyman, we have to aim at the core of the site. I show this here. This part of the site is uniformly 15 degrees clockwise oriented, directly towards the region of Pole 5. And that could mean that the site is probably very ancient, as old as Pole 5. The probability that the structure in this region coincidentally matches with one of the poles 1 to 5 is only 10.8%. From this we already know with a probability of around 90% that this core area of Saxe Weyman is between 330,000 and 345,000 years old. If we can find more clues we could boost our claim even more significantly. Also, at the heart of Saxe Weyman, we find this typical circular structure called the Muyomarca. It is believed that this was once a tower. The Spaniards destroyed the tower together with the peoples, the sagas and the traditions. Can we somehow reconstruct something meaningful from what is left? Yes, we can. This structure contains elements of a solar wheel. What is remarkable is that the site and the solar wheel are collectively oriented to 15 degrees clockwise. And that is no coincidence. This was probably an astronomical instrument. Why would one orient a solar wheel or a sort of cardinal system 15 degrees clockwise? Not unless it was for a good reason. When we examine maps made by archaeologists, we at once see a complete absence of orientational consciousness. The maps are made incorrectly. Ah! 
how can science reconstruct our history when they are missing crucial data? Very little is known about Muyumarca or the purpose for which it was used. Archaeology, with all their fairy tales, doesn't know what to fantasize about regarding this strange wheel. It is divided into three concentric sections, as well as into 12 equal parts. You might have seen our sources reconstructions from other previous videos. We will not repeat these details here over and over again, but found that the ancient solstices conform quite closely to the sections I'm showing here. The data suggests that the tower was used as a calendar system. The solstice angles of the regions belonging to Pole 5 are close to the depicted walls. We have seen similar structures in other parts of the world, like in Mexico, England, Turkey and Sardinia. Because the Muyamaca was believed to have been a tower, there were probably observation slots in the walls of the tower to monitor the exact moment of the solstice. We have seen this in other places around the world. The more extremely angled walls correspond closely to the phenomenon that we call the lunastis. Once in every 18 years or so, the moon rises and sets at very extreme angles. And this is called the major lunar standstill. This is a phenomenon that is still relatively unknown today. The motions of the moon around the Earth are very complex, partially because of the Earth's tilt and partially because the moon's orbital plane is not perpendicular to the spin axis of the Earth. So a very complex dance between the two celestial bodies arises naturally. The ancients were most likely very fascinated by this obscure rising and setting of the moon and the moments for catching this weird phenomenon were very rare. We have seen similar structures for observing the major lunar standstill in Sardinia at a very mysterious site called Nuraga Santu Antine. Because we find clues in the Muyamarca that are very close to the ancient solstices, we can boost our claim that this part of Sexagüeyman is as old as Pole 5, reaching a probability of almost 100%. That means that this part of the site is originally, and I stress the word originally, between 330,000 and 345,000 years old. Now what about the beautiful walls surrounding the structure? These seem to be meant as defensive walls. However, no ordinary defensive walls, no defensive walls that are capable to withstand extreme catastrophic earthquakes. Typically, earthquakes that appear during crustal deformation cycles that exceed the current maximum scale of 10 on the Richter scale. For a wall to withstand the extreme violence, two things are crucial. Firstly, the interlocking of stone blocks, which is achieved by their amazing shapes. And secondly, different masses of the stone blocks. When all stone blocks are of the same weight and an earthquake matches the oscillation frequency of those blocks, the whole wall collapses. When the stone blocks are of different weights and different shapes, walls might only partially collapse. And that is what we see today. The walls still stand tall and some parts are only partially collapsed. How old are these walls? The average orientation of the north walls matches exactly the position of pole 2, which could mean that this wall was built during pole 2, and so is between 130,000 and 155,000 years old. And this explains why no tools are found, because only stone survives the eons. I hope you enjoyed this video. This might not be the last video we created on this subject of this intriguing site. Thank you for watching.